Hi, I'm Dan. I have spent four years working as a podcaster and YouTuber. And that has given me some experience that I would like to share with you guys. When I started out in early 2013, I was uh, pretty soft skinned and I ran into trolls that almost killed my enthusiasm. But uh, with some good advice, I didn't allow it. So now I'll try to give you the same piece of advice. Piece of advice. First, you have to remember what matters. If you are a content creator on the internet, you will get hated. No matter what you do, people will hate you. People will troll you. But the haters and the trolls, they do not matter. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. You're doing it for your fans. They are the people that matter. The people who love your content, they matter. And you matter. Remember that your enthusiasm is your number one resource. It was your enthusiasm that got you onto YouTube or got you starting a podcast or starting a blog. But when your enthusiasm is gone, you have nothing and your project will be dead. So to put this in perspective, remember the 10-80-10 rule. I've heard this expressed as the 30-40-30 rule as well. But the main point isn't the numbers, the main point is the different people. There are some people who will always love what you do. They will always love you, they are enthusiastic about anything. If you do something that's bad, you know you will. Especially if you put out a lot of content, some stuff will be worse than other stuff. But they will still forgive you, they will like, ah yeah, next time it will be great and they will just skip the bad stuff. 10% will always hate you and they will hate you. They will have a dispro disproportionate amount of hate. They will just, you can't believe what you're seeing when you're seeing their comments. You're like, why, what did I do? I just put up some free content for, uh, yeah, that's, why is this happening? But I'll tell you why it's happening. But re you, now you should remember that just 10% will always hate you. The other 80%, they can be influenced. If you do good content, if you make great stuff, if you're polite, if you are nice, if you're friendly, the 80% will like you too. And if you do crap, if you are hateful yourself, the 80% can be swayed the other way. But the important thing about the 80% is that they can be influenced. So, your fans, the people who subscribe to you, the people who share your stuff, the people who follow you on Facebook, on Twitter, those who wait eagerly for your next release, they are what matters. And this is where you need to spend your time and energy. And this is the trap. Because when the haters and trolls show up, they will try to take your time and your energy. And your time and your energy must be spent on your fans. Okay, let's look at the haters and trolls. I think you know what I mean. I'm not talking about constructive negative criticism. Because some of the stuff you do, some of the stuff I do, it's bad. And it can be improved with constructive criticism. So constructive criticism is great. But this is not what I'm talking about in this video. I am talking about the haters and trolls, the people who are constantly negative, that are seldom or never constructive. Internet trolls behave in certain ways. They feed on negativity. Negativity makes them feel that they matter. They will berate you. And they will berate your fans. They will tell them, how can you be this stupid to like this guy? And they, they might kill your fans' enthusiasm as well. I used to run, uh, I, I'm still running a YouTube channel about Magic the Gathering. And uh, one thing I did was to bring in like new video makers and hey, I have a couple of fans. Why don't you make a video and see if you like it? And they did. And these people were prime troll bait. They had no experience and I wasn't experienced enough to teach them this before they went online. And they were killed by the trolls. Trolls are attacking boredom. They are not attacking you. They take pride in being critical. And here I have the quote Chris Schifflet at Swiss Miss. The lessons I've learned is to be wary of those who take pride in disliking things. 
The ones who seem to think that being critical is the same as having good taste. Those people almost never have good taste, so their opinions don't matter. So even what you've done isn't so great. Just remember that those who can't say so with grace, those who seem to take pride in criticizing you, their opinions do not matter. It may very well be that you have created a masterpiece and they are just children. Sometimes a troll can masquerade as constructive criticism. That's difficult. That's probably the uh, subject for another video. But in the long run, if you feed the trolls, if you let the trolls get you, they will kill your enthusiasm and that will kill your project. Some stuff that will not work then. You cannot debate with the trolls. This is the way they steal your time and energy. When you feed them, when you comment on them, when you debate with them, they grow stronger. Also, growing a thicker skin is hard. It will happen over time. But uh, that's not your job. Growing the skin is also takes time and energy. Another... Another way I felt that I could deal with this was to focus on the love I got, on the positive reviews and the people debating with the trolls. But then those people were feeding the trolls and the trolls were still happy being hateful. So there is only one solution. I, there is probably another solution, but this is the number one solution and the one that has worked for me. And it's so simple. And it feels kind of cheating, but this is what you have to do. You have to block and ignore whenever, wherever the troll show up, shows up on your content. Block and ignore. It's the only way this. Though it is the only way that works. It's the only way the troll won't take your time and energy, because your time and energy needs to go to your fans. It is unfair to give your time and energy to the trolls. And this of course applies to social media, on your Twitter, on your Facebook page for your content, on your content location, just block and ignore. Uh, there was a prime example of this in Sweden. There is a Sweden account where somebody represents the country on Twitter every uh, Every week, for a week, they represent the country and then they really can't block and ignore properly. And this has turned into a hate fest some of the time. So block and ignore. Just do it. They have to mention one of my idols, Cameron Riley. He's a podcaster. He does Life of Caesar, Life of Alexander, The Cold War, etc. Cameron Riley is an Aussie and he has extremely super thick skin. And he has been podcasting longer than almost anyone else. And he, he seems to think that it's fun. I think he thinks it's fun to publicly read what the trolls write and then berate them. And um, his podcasts are very explicit. So he will use the language that uh, you know what I mean. And uh, it's, he makes it funny. So it really works for him. And... I like to think about Cameron Riley when the trolls appear. Because I, I like to imagine Cameron standing over my shoulder screaming, but FK those guys. And that kind of works actually. So I just wanted to mention one specific technique for growing a podcast. Do you hear this from all advice for podcasting that you should be reading the iTunes reviews? Because iTunes reviews are so good for gaining rating i am currently at number one on the itunes sweden chart with my new serial killer podcast seriemördarpodden in swedish and uh, it's uh, partly thanks to itunes reviews uh, so you have to read them and then of course you will get the trolls writing itunes reviews and that seems bad because then you have to read those reviews but it's actually pretty great because all itunes reviews help iTunes rating seems to work uh, in that way that if you get 200 negative reviews, it's still good for you. And I'm, I have to get back to you on that because I haven't figured out how the rating works, but it seems to be that the amount of iTunes reviews helps. 
Uh, but this will quickly become uh, hard to handle when you get a lot of iTunes reviews. So I think one important rule is to be honest, tell your listeners that you will read iTunes reviews and if they get too many you will cherry pick among them and read what you feel are the most constructive reviews. And I'm about to do that on the uh, serial killer cast because I got one iTunes reviews for the first one iTunes review for the first uh, five episodes and then I got 65. So uh, yeah, I have to. I'm thinking about like reading them on YouTube, but I don't know exactly how I will do that yet. But you have to. You can't read them all in every episode, or maybe you can, but it's pretty boring, and it's kind of taking time away from your fans if they are too negative. If you want to talk more about this, if you want to share your techniques for dealing with haters and trolls, please do. You can do it in the comments of this video. You can do it with me on Facebook. I am the only one with that name. It's making it easy for the haters and trolls to find me. You can find me on Twitter. And uh, of course, on this YouTube channel, I will talk about my life, but my life it's a lot about podcasting on YouTube, so that is a pretty big part of it. Thank you for watching, I hope this helped. Your content is great, don't let anyone tell you that it isn't.